Throughout human history, we have put our best minds to work creating new and better weapons. Here is the history of the ancient arms race, which started millions of years ago, when our ancient ancestors were stabbing with sharp sticks and throwing rocks at anything that moved. Number 7, Throwing Rocks, aka Stone Age Missiles. Early humans were able to hunt prey by throwing round rocks with impressive skill. Long before the invention of the spear, our prehistoric ancestors were throwing rocks to take down prey on the African plains. Small chunks of rock, many the size of a tennis ball, still litter the ground at important archaeological sites. Researchers looked at stone tools from archaeological sites in South Africa. They analyzed their effectiveness as throwing weapons by hunters, and found more than 80% of them would have inflicted damage from over 80 feet away. The use of these effective weapons shows perceptual thinking. Previous research suggested that these types of spheroid rocks would have been used to shape or grind other materials. But their weight makes them ideal throwing weapons for Stone Age hunters. A team collected 55 of the stone balls, near caves at an archaeological site in South Africa. The sites at the Makapan Valley are among some of the most important paleontological sites in the world. Focusing on stones recovered from sites dating between 70,000 and 1.8 million years ago, the team simulated how they would be thrown by an expert, and what sort of damage they could cause to a medium-sized prey animal, like an impala. A single blow may not have killed the animal, but multiple stones from a group of hunters could have slowed or injured the prey to get close enough for the death blow. Whilst other animals have been known to throw objects on occasion, none can match the speed, accuracy and distances that a trained human can achieve. Indeed, humans are uniquely specialized for throwing, both anatomically and psychologically. Throwing has played a vital role in our evolutionary past, enabling us both to hunt prey and to compete with other carnivores to scavenge carcasses. The ability to damage or kill prey at a distance not only expands the range of foods available, but also reduces the risk of close confrontation with dangerous prey. The prehistoric hunters would have had to weigh up the size and mass of the stone to find those which work best. Too light and it might not do enough damage, too heavy and it might not make the distance. This perceptual task would have needed brainpower to analyze the properties of the stones, learn from mistakes and choose the right ones. The researchers believe that many of the rocks were likely picked up elsewhere and brought to the site, ready to launch. This study shows that they are good hunting weapons when thrown overhand, and we know early humans could throw with power and accuracy. The ability to throw great distances was not a small thing, it was how we got our lunch. We are the only animals, and even the only primates, with that talent. Research suggests that the throwing of stones played a key role in the evolution of hunting before the development of spears. This all points to rocks being used in social hunting, working together to bring down prey or scare off carnivores from a kill. This isn't exactly news about humans, but being social is a good predictor of large brains and intelligence. Number 6, Thrusting Spears. The spear was invented long ago, and were used until very recently in hunting and warfare. But the earliest evidence of humans using spears, found in Germany, probably was used by early Neanderthals. This spear is a sharpened stick, hardened by fire. Later, thrusting spears used a point made of rock or obsidian. But Neanderthal technology never advanced beyond the thrusting spear, which probably led to their demise. However, thrusting spears were surely used by Homo erectus, and probably other humans group over the last two million years. Tests done by anthropologists show how these spears were effectively used to hunt deer, and other animals. Early humans could run very fast, and had the same anatomy as modern humans, so they could surely throw a spear, but the intelligence for building a spear, that could be thrown accurately probably did not develop until much later. Hunting, using thrusting spears was a dangerous business, and early humans show the broken bones to prove it. Interestingly, one population of modern chimpanzees in Senegal uses spears to hunt bush babies, suggesting the technology may have been used by our most primitive ancestors. Number 5, the boomerang, aka the throwing stick. Boomerangs are strongly associated with Australia's Aboriginal people, but were actually used as hunting weapons throughout Europe, Asia, and Africa, and most boomerangs do not come back when thrown. 
The oldest boomerang ever found, 23,000 years old, was made from a mammoth tusk and discovered in a cave in Poland. The fact that Australian Aborigines have this weapon, suggests they left Africa with it. In contrast, the bow and arrow never reached Australia, while it was used everywhere else in the world, and was the weapon of choice in the Americas. Since throwing spears were invented at least 200,000 years ago, throwing sticks were probably invented at least several hundred thousand years ago, but since they are usually made of wood, they don't show up in the archaeological record. Many complex behaviors started appearing between 200,000 and 300,000 years ago. We see a shift in anatomical structures that would have allowed us to speak, and a shift toward more complex tools. Indeed, the advances seen here in tools probably have to do with the emergence of language. It's sometimes assumed that the earliest discovery of something is the first instance of that thing. This is just the oldest example we have so far of this technology, it doesn't mean that this is where it first evolved. Number 4, the throwing spear, aka the javelin. Throwing spears may even predate modern humans. The oldest stone-tipped throwing weapons, known as javelins, date to 280,000 years in Ethiopia. Throwing spears were probably used against crocodiles, hippos, or some other big-game animal that a hunter could get close to using boats. These javelins are some 200,000 years older than previous examples of similar weapons. This suggests that modern humans, and their extinct relatives, had the know-how to create these sorts of complex throwing projectiles much earlier than often thought. Today, the area of Ethiopia where the spear points were found, represents a ridge overlooking one of the four lakes in the vicinity. During much of the Middle Pleistocene, about 125,000 to 780,000 years ago, the area was overlooking an even bigger lake, a mega lake composed of today's four separate lakes. Indeed, antelope and hippo remains have been recovered from the grassy forested site. The oldest artifacts at the site are roughly 279,000 years old, so these spears may have been made by very Homo sapiens. In comparison, the earliest known fossils of Homo sapiens, previously discovered at sites elsewhere in Ethiopia, are about 200,000 years old. But older Homo sapiens fossils exist in Morocco and South Africa. Pointed artifacts, with damage suggesting they were used in spears, are common at the site. Scientists were interested in testing the hypothesis that these artifacts were definitely used to tip spears. The eureka moment came when they did analysis, and found out that the features they were dealing with were the result of throwing impact, not thrusting. When pointed artifacts are used as weapons, V-shaped fractures, called fracture wings, can form at the moment of impact. Past experiments in materials such as obsidian have shown that the narrower the V-shapes of fracture wings, the higher the speed of the fracturing that created them. The researchers discovered that the fracture wings, seen in a dozen of these obsidian, points suggest that the fracture cracking sped faster than 1,820 miles an hour, or 2,930 km an hour. In experiments with thrusting spears, that's the maximum velocity seen in fracturing. And some of these artifacts apparently developed fractures after impact, at speeds of up to 3,345 miles an hour, or 5,385 km an hour, close to the maximum velocity seen with fracturing in throwing spears. A number of these artifacts are among the oldest at the site, suggesting that javelins were used as early as 279,000 years ago. Such weapons are considered signs of complex behavior, and were pivotal to the spread of modern humans. The implication is that certain behavioral traits that are considered complex, were only the domains of anatomically modern humans, such as the capacity to make and use projectiles. But these traits were not only incorporated into the technological repertoire of early Homo sapiens, but also had earlier roots and were present in populations ancestral to Homo sapiens. The invention of projectile weapons was a major advance over thrusting spears carried in the hand. Projectiles empowered prehistoric hunters to strike at a distance, reducing the risk of injury from dangerous animals, and broadening the range of prey that people could hunt. Stone-tipped hunting spears appear in the fossil record beginning about 500,000 years ago. But, these were thrusting spears, not throwing javelins. Until recently, the oldest conclusive evidence dated such projectiles at only 80,000 years old. 
the creator of the most ancient obsidian javelins was probably early Homo sapiens. There may be no way to determine whether Homo sapiens discovered how to make these weapons independently, or if they learned how to do so from earlier humans. Number 3, the Atlatl, aka the Spear Thrower. Researchers would like to discover exactly when humans began using even more complex mechanically propelled weapons, such as the spear thrower known as the Atlatl. This weapon may have been developed between 60,000 and 100,000 years ago. The Atlatl, sometimes called the Stone Age Kalashnikov, throws a flexible dart that can kill a deer at 40 meters, or 120 feet. Developed in Africa, probably around 100,000 years ago, it spread throughout the world, being later replaced by the bow and arrow. These were used by modern humans to hunt megafauna throughout Eurasia, and probably helped them to take over hunting lands from Neanderthals, who never adopted the atlatl. The spear thrower increased the distance and accuracy of the throwing spear, which had been in use at least 200,000 years. Atlatl are found throughout the Stone Age world, including in the Americas. The Aztecs used them to fight the Spanish in Mexico. These advanced weapons helped modern humans expand out of Africa and outcompete Neanderthals in Europe. Number 4 Poison Darts and Arrows. From slaying centaurs in ancient mythology, poison tipped darts and arrows are a staple of cultural stories around the world. But they've also proved highly effective in real life, so much so that indigenous peoples around the world are still making use of them today. The Kalahari San, of southern Africa, hunt with small arrows that may look quite dainty, but when coated with poison, they also prove quite lethal. The hunters daub their weapons with the larvae entrails of a beetle. The larvae contain a poison that is capable of bringing down an adult giraffe. Some of the earliest evidence of poison use is traces of a highly toxic compound found on 24,000-year-old wooden applicators, found in South Africa's border cave. However, archaeologists have long suspected this hunting technique is much older, and new evidence now suggests humans have been shooting poison arrows for the last 72,000 years. Arrows that don't use poison need to deeply pierce the bodies of prey, to effectively kill or incapacitate. Whereas, those laced with poison just need to stab through an animal's skin, to access its bloodstream. Using a measurement of the part of the arrowhead important for both cutting into prey, and the arrow's flight dynamics, allowed researchers to compare arrows. Six of the arrows dated as far back as 72,000 to 80,000 years, from South Africa. The results show that three of these arrows have properties consistent with poisoned arrowheads. Another of the bone points, older than 60,000 years, was found to have microcracks, which are consistent with use as an arrow. This arrow was also found to have a black residue that researchers suspect is either poison, glue, or both. Humans have made use of poisons from a large variety of sources, including plants, poison dart frogs, and even venomous lizards. When dealing with the human past, numbers alone can seldom reveal the nuances necessary for a deep understanding of technological behaviors. For that, a measure of qualitative assessment and interpretation is required. The evidence shows how these ancient human technologies became effective weapons that has stood the test of time. Number 1, the bow and arrow. Early bow and arrows discovered in South Africa suggest early humans had advanced intelligence and modern culture 71,000 years ago and offer insight into the origins of human intellect. Evidence from Sri Lanka also shows humans were using the bow and arrow to hunt in a tropical rainforest 60,000 years ago. The bow and arrow is an ancient weapon, going back at least 71,000 years. Archaeologists, working at South Africa's Pinnacle Point Cave site, uncovered a collection of tiny blades, about an inch big, that resemble arrow points. These likely belonging to prehistoric bow and arrows or spear throwers. The researchers say the discovery is further evidence that Homo sapiens started to act and think like modern people early in their evolution. The skeletons of early Homo sapiens appear in the fossil record about 300,000 years ago in Africa. But when modern culture and cognition emerged is still an open question. Some anthropologists think the human brain evolved in tandem with the rest of the body, and culture built up slowly over time as technology advanced. 
Others have suggested there was a disconnect between physical and behavioral modernity, with some sort of genetic mutation, roughly 40,000 years ago, causing an abrupt change in how humans think. Still other researchers argue that incipient signs of advanced intellect appear early in the archaeological record, but then disappear for thousands of years before reappearing. Needless to say, there's a lot of debate on this subject. The tiny blades are signs of complex tool making. The tiny tools were created from silkrete stone that people had heated over a fire to make the raw material easier to work with before chipping the rock into blades. This suggests people had to follow a lengthy multi-step process to make the blades, which included gathering the stones, gathering fuel for the fire, heating the rocks and carefully cutting the stone into delicate blades. The shape of the blades looks like the shape of arrow tips, found in more recent arrows, which anthropologists to conclude the blades were used in bow and arrow projectile weapons. That implies there were even more steps in the toolmaking process, such as hafting the stone tips to a wooden shaft. It seems that simple stone blades make adequate arrowheads, so they might have been used in lightweight projectile weapons as far back as 100,000 years ago, when the blades first appeared. The bow and arrow would have let early hunters catch small fast-moving creatures, rather than tackling large dangerous animals with handheld spears. But, the earliest arrowheads date from more than 70,000 years ago, suggesting that the bow and arrow were already in use, but some believe they were invented much earlier. A thorough analysis of projectile points from archaeological digs around the world suggests that projectile weapons were not in widespread use before 50,000 years ago. The earliest evidence for arrows, aka mechanically delivered projectile weapons, in Europe, was from 45 to 40,000 years ago in southern Italy. Microscopic analysis of stone blades revealed their use as mechanically delivered projectile weapons and are attributed to anatomically modern humans. Residue analysis indicates that the blades were used as hunting weapons, hafted to shafts with complex adhesives. While experimental and ethnographic comparisons also support their use as projectiles. The use of projectiles conferred a hunting strategy with a higher impact energy and a potential subsistence advantage over other human populations and species. The blades aren't the only evidence that humans had advanced cognitive abilities as early as 71,000 years ago. Pigments, jewelry and other art, found in South African cave sites dating to as many as 164,000 years ago, suggest that early humans were capable of abstract or symbolic thinking. Indeed, some researchers view this ability as central to modern human intellect. There's also a hypothesis that heavy spears require a lot of training, and a big robust body to use them properly. Spear throwers and the bow may have given their users an edge not just because they launch projectiles farther or faster, but because they could be picked up more easily, by more members of a group. As technology, maybe they weren't only inherently superior, but they were also more user-friendly.